Crucify him, crucify him. I would be the worst Jesus and superstar, wouldn't I? I'd just be like needy, just like, hey, don't, ow, that hurts. <laughs> Are you my it. mom? Owie. Hey, Owie. ow. You know, yeah. they'd be like, everything is great. Yeah, and I'd be like, no, it's not. <laughs> Hi, Alan. The nails. Hi, how Dude, are you? I'm okay. I miss you a lot. How are you? I'm I'm good. I'm good. I've been getting over like a cough that you know I worry about, but it's I'm getting over it. So I'm actually good. I'm glad about that too because you know me, I get worried about it, and I live alone. So I'm like, oh, what can I do for Alan? And it's like nothing. <laughs> I can't do anything for Alan. We can go. I can play. leave him alone. <laughs> we can play. We can play Jackbox at night. Yeah, yeah, which we do. Um. Uh, but but tonight is going to be really special um, because tonight is something that I've been fangirling about for a long time. And But before we get to that, I just want to say a special thank you to all of our Patreons. Patreons. I'm going to sing about them, but not tonight. But um, we do have some fun news, some different news. We are going to be doing Josh Swallow's Broadway live streams once a week. For now on, next week, it's going to be Saturday night. After that, we're going back to Wednesday nights because there's a special event next Wednesday. Mm. Um, but we're also doing this so I can spend some quality time with my Patreon booze. Uh, we're going to be doing some Zoom hangouts and dance parties and stuff. So it's going to be fun. Again, this is totally free for everybody. If you can, uh, we're just looking to help support the show, the Broadway Podcast Network, and to keep the show going so we can have a season two when we climb out of our this. So if you'd like to, in zero pressure, it's patreon.com slash Josh Swallows Broadway. Um, <clears throat> in the meantime, Alan, were you able to see uh, the Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ, the Jesus the Christ Jesus Star, uh, concert last year with, um, or not last year, it was uh, when Groundhog Day was in rehearsals with uh, Morgan Shoshana and Orfe and no, all these incredible no, people. I didn't. <clears throat> it was maybe the most spectacular night of my life. I have not stopped thinking about it since. And, um, you know, it's, it's very overwhelming to me. Um, but you know what, without further ado, let's just bring on this incredible team of producers, Morgan James, Orfe is going to be joining us in a bit. Um, and let's just shower them with some fucking love. The crew of the, she is risen EP. <laughs> Yay! Hi, Josh. Hi, hey, Morgan. Josh. Hi, Meg. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm trying to blow my screen a little bit so I can see everybody better. Um, <laughs> I do podcasts and musicals, not technology. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hi, and we've got Toria Beard and Richard Emilius. Um, hey. Now, uh, I know that we're missing one producer, right? We're missing Don Camerling, and we're missing, um, well, it's a huge team of people that brought this together. So we could never all fit on a Zoom or a pod on any one screen. But this is a, 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 a slice of, of the people that brought this together. And Don is, is an incredible publicist and producer, and she wow. kind of was a huge part of bringing this to light. Richard directed the concert you saw. And then of course he remained my right-hand man through everything. Toria was over at our house when I had the dream about Jesus Christ Restore. So she's been in, <laughs> involved from the beginning. And um, Meg played pretty much every instrument you can play and produced it with me. And she's just an incredible centered force of nature. So this is this is who you have today. Um. I have to thank you from the bottom of my heart, all of you and those who are not here with us. Uh, th that sounds so morbid. Those who are not that here with us really today. Um, <laughs> and you're like, and everybody else is dead. Um, no, but for, for this piece of art that you gave us, um, keep in mind, like, I don't have a sentimental history with Superstar. I grew up 
this fat Jewish kid. And my first introduction to Superstar was my Jewish grandpa, whose family came from Russia. So Fiddler was like their superstar. And I remember Superstar playing on some compilation, you know, tape that I had. And he was like, fast forward, Jesus Christ, bullshit star. You want a musical? Fiddler's a musical. I remember that so vividly. But then, you know, over the years, I got to listen to it. My ex was in um, the national tour with Ted Neely. And so I saw it a bunch and I was like, yeah, this is great music. But then when I saw yours, it made sense. Something about it just clicked and it made sense to me. And it like, just like hooked into my soul. And I was like, this is the only production I ever need to see again. I didn't even watch the NBC, NBC Live one. Sorry, friends. I know you're very gifted. <laughs> Hi. Here's Don. Here's hey. Don. Hi, Don. Oh my hey. God. Our team. Thank you for <laughs> what Hi, you darling. do. <laughs> well, so funny. So I want to tell the story of how like Don came into the mix. Yes. Um, after the concert, Meg played in the concert in the, we had an all female cast and all female band. And it was, it was like fast and dirty. We had, you know, we rehearsed for Richard, what a couple, maybe a week, two days, two yeah. days. not uh, even, days. not even two days. Got in it the was room. very quick. It was very quick. Very and, quick. you know, and we threw together all these superstars. We, you know, everybody learned their material. And then we got this female band. Meg was in it, of course. And every single one of my friends was like, Hey, who's, up, oh, you're on mute, Morgan. Okay, I, know, I good, accidentally hit it. Um, and it was incredible. <laughs> Crucify her. <laughs> Crucify her. Crucify. So after the concert, May, is this okay if I tell the story, Megan Don? Yeah, 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 totally. Okay. Um, so after the concert, um, somebody said that Stephen Colbert mentioned the an all female Jesus Christ superstar on yeah. the air randomly one day. We we were we were laying in bed. So this right. is my partner, Don. Uh, we were laying in bed together. It's not weird. And um, <laughs> yeah, defend yourself. Oh my! He got, got a text from a friend, right? That said, "Did you see Colbert last night?" I think it was Morgan actually that sent the text. No, because I didn't no, know it wasn't okay, Morgan. It was it was, it was, somebody you know what? Else. It was it was the drummer girl. Oh, the drummer girl. Ro Ro Rosie. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And um, we got this text that said, "Did you see Colbert?" He said. What next? A uh, all female Jesus Christ superstar in response to something Trump had said, right? Um, and so Dawn immediately, you know, she has a lot of connections to Colbert because she's worked with a lot of different people that have been on the show. And she said, I have to write his team right now and say, I have an all, all female Jesus Christ superstar. Like <laughs> we have to go on Colbert like tonight. And and they wrote back, Well. We'd love to put you on, but do you have an upcoming show that you can promote or a record? <laughs> and we were like, what now? <laughs> well, and then somebody said we should talk. Don and I talked. We basically made like Many a soul connection. Yeah, we, yes. we, should, we should make a record. And then Morgan and I fell in love and said. Yeah. And said, okay, let's figure out how to make this happen. And yeah. then. 17 trillion years later. Yeah, like <laughs> many, many ulcers later. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we were able to, to put it out and uh, it came to fruition. And initially, yeah. it, you, Toria and Richard were over at my house. I had had a dream about doing an all-female Jesus Christ Superstar with Shoshana Bean. Mm -hmm. And they came over to my house for Christmas. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> and <laughs> Christmas Day. Not. And I said, oh, I had this dream. And they were like, they were very serious. They were like, okay, well, how do we make this dream happen? And I was like, oh, I don't know. Probably not. And they're like, no, no, we want to. Very mm -hmm. serious. And so we started planning from then on. Yeah. Um and that's how it happened it pretty quickly too. the concert. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We got it. We have to make a record now. So it, the initial thought was like, we're, we're going to go on Colbert and we're going to slay and we're going to sell a million records. <laughs> right. Like that was what was going to well, happen. Because it could concert, still happen. Like you had yeah. already done the concert. Like yeah, the, yeah, the, the concert. Morgan and you guys came up with this vision and apparently it sold out the entire Highland ballroom and everybody was freaking out about everybody it. Everybody was, so like, was like, when can we see this again? In this you know? brilliant idea. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then it was, right? Yeah. And I always wanted to make a concept album of it. I actually wanted to make a concept album before I wanted to make a concert of it because I was obsessed with the original concept album of Jesus Christ Superstar. Oh, yeah. 
And that, yeah. and I was like, I love, that's one of my, that's my favorite of all the JCS and I love concept albums. And yeah. I thought, oh, wouldn't that be amazing? I think we all initially bonded on that too. Like when yes. we were talking about doing this, the the biggest thing was to, to do, uh, you know, justice to the original concept album, because that's what we all came up listening to. And like, I remember, you know, my mom cleaning the house, listening to that record, and that, and I remember the vinyl with the brown cover, yes, and like, the brown leather with the gold. It, yeah, and like feeling that, like that was a special thing that my parents had in their collection, in their record collection, that they would listen to. And and so when we were talking about this initially doing this project, we wanted to really stay true to that, the sounds of that recording, and and like pay homage to that recording well you did but you also moved it forward which yeah. is something very very oh no where did toria go oh, we lost one okay there you are she's back oh toria what was <laughs> your experience like working on this oh it was so much fun it was a joy yeah. i um I thrive in collaboration. So um, there's no greater joy for me than like watching a project from inception to execution and like just being involved in everything in between. And I get to work with amazing friends. So I have no, it was beautiful. I loved yeah. it. Well, also one thing I was talking to one of my producers, uh, Dory Berenstein, who's a genius about something people don't really realize about producing is they're not just like people sitting back and like sending out emails. They are out there with like a fucking battle ax, like <laughs> getting shit done. And, um, you know, like real warriors. And um, I mean, that was an experience what you all pulled off, um, not just pulled off, but gave us. Gave the no, world. we pulled it off. Yeah, <laughs> we pulled yeah. it off. The concert was easy. The concert was a few thousand bucks, and like getting people who were excited to sing the music together. But then the record, we got involved in trying to to crowdfund, you know, thousands of dollars to to make that record happen. And then that then Pledge Music went bankrupt, and we sort of were sitting with all this music in our hands and no money, and um. For a while, it was really, you know, a, a kick in the pants because we thought, now this will never come out. Right. Um, so what you're saying is that you raised all the money, and then this site went bankrupt, and so right. really, all this money that you had didn't actually exist. Well, thankfully, we had we had done the lion's share of the work was accomplished on the front end, at least. Like we had all the yeah. recording. We've recorded the entire right. score. We, right. You know, we so all the front end costs we had paid for, but we didn't have any money to execute the rest of the project, meaning finishing getting doing any merchandise or any sort of manufacturing or finishing mixing, finishing mastering. In addition to the fact that it was coinciding with the pledge thing was coinciding with the fact that Andrew Lloyd Weber and his folks were doing all these other JCS projects and kept saying, oh, why don't you wait? Why don't you wait? Yeah. All these things. And so both yeah. of these things like breaking down our spirit so like speak for myself bringing down my spirit and and feeling like it was a one one closed door after the other and losing the money was is obviously a huge um setback for any project that costs a lot of money like like this oh fuck. yeah it sucked but i have to say like this team was incredible especially with morgan like leading this every few months you would get like a um all right, team, we're going to be setback. Massive setback. Like, <laughs> we can do it, you know? Yeah. I mean, and so every every one of us was just, like, done. And, like, I can't give any more to this. And then you would get, an, like, a, a text from Morgan with the group. And, and we would all sort of find another level of win in our sales. It was like a, it was like a choose your yeah. own adventure every day. It really it's was. like. So what's actually, gonna happen next yeah, yeah. i give a I lot mean, of props to you for that oh Monday thank you i you're welcome. 
Thank you. I kept turning to my husband and saying, they're never, I'm like the magician that won't produce a rabbit. Like they're never going to believe me again. <laughs> oh, no. I'm like, no, you guys, this time it's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> I, no. I really did. You know, I, I, cause I asked a lot of people, the people you see in this, in this room and also dozens of other people to, to go with me on a, a like a journey of faith, essentially. And I can't like Jesus, like Jesus. Pilgrimage. Yeah. pilgrimage, like Jesus. Well, you know, you can't do any project like this alone. Like it takes it Ooh, no way, you know, it just takes the mass. No, there are massive. some assholes that think that they can, and then yeah. you agree to it, and you go there, and you're like, oh, you're the asshole that thinks that you can. I'm gonna tip no out of this room. Um, actually, I want, Toria, tell tell Josh and the and the folks about a broader way, and um, because that was real, something really special that's going to be on Volume Two, which is the the broader yeah. way girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, a broader way foundation is a nonprofit organization that leverages the arts to teach leadership skills to middle school age girls, and then we have a short extension program for high schoolers, like uh, ninth and 10th grade. And um, it was founded almost exactly 10 years ago by Adina Menzel and Tay Diggs. And I am the executive director of A Broader Way. And so when we started thinking about this project and Morgan said, I want girls, I want young voices on, the, on these tracks. And I was like, I have an idea. So um, we just figured it out. And we got a group of girls uh, from, they were sixth grade, through eighth grade, and they, they had a couple a of rehearsals. They came on a bus from Harlem New Brooklyn to recording. Brooklyn, <laughs> <laughs> and they were petrified. And oh. thankfully, Morgan had come up to us. We um, run our program out of National Black Theater um, in Harlem, and so Morgan came up one day to work with them, um, along with Ben Wexler, who was helping to teach them the music. And so they had they were somewhat familiar with her, but when they walked into the studio, it was like. You know, it's, they were very fancy looking in the studio. Yeah, well, especially yeah. when you see like all the albums that have been made there before, and you're like, what, 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 and what, 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 what? Tiny what? babies, right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, kids. yeah, yeah. They had a great time though, and I felt like the more we talked about why it was important to push forward, like as Dawn was saying, every time the door would close, and Morgan would say, "I have another idea," or "This is going to happen," <laughs> or "We're going to wait until you know things change." We were, I was just like, at a certain point, I just started to get so fired up thinking about um, how sometimes you can have the purest of intentions and you can have everything mapped out, but it doesn't always go your way. It, there's, there are no guarantees. This is truly a, um, like an exercise in faith and patience to produce anything. You never know how it's going to go. But I was really, really jazzed about having the voices of young girls of color represented in such a beautiful way. So, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think Morgan and Richard did an amazing job making sure that everyone was represented in our cast and on our band. And like, right. you know, I I work with an organization called Rock Camp for Girls, and it's it's a, a nationwide and worldwide organization. One of the things that we really strive for is to make sure that everyone is represented in our um, community. And I think that one of the, the strengths and one of the most beautif beautiful things about this recording is that that is so true. Like literally everyone is represented in this this project. Yeah. And that's so important. It, it means so much to me and it means so much to a lot of our listeners. And mm -hmm. I think I'm, I'm really proud of that piece piece of it and I and I have so much respect for you know everybody that worked so hard to make that happen because it's so important what's uh yeah, th this doesn't have to do with superstar but it does have to do with Richard and like this you know connection with Morgan because they've been friends with so long is Richard like inadvertently saved my life and is no, you did, you know that you did and uh, gave me my equity card and is responsible for me having a career. Um, oh, like you're responsible for you having a career. No, 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 no. It was what? 2000 or 2001. I literally. Oh, it was 2003. <laughs> yeah. Was check on hide, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah. uh, literally like was living in a crack house had like nothing going for me i was a female phone sex operator in a horrifically abusive relationship 
And I went to this open call with a fake ass resume and- um, And an incredible voice. Yeah, but I didn't get a call back. And then when they didn't have a high tenor, Richard was the one that was like, the kid that you didn't call back. Yeah. And- no. I bet he did it with that, with that. I rec recognize <laughs> that attitude. That phrase. Well, it, it was yeah. one of those producers that wanted to hire hot boys. And yeah. I was like, yeah, but what you're missing in all these hot boys is somebody who can actually sing this score. And they were like, we didn't see anybody. And I, I pulled out his headshot and I was like, Josh Lehman. <gasps> no and they way. Hired him. What a good yep. story. And Andy Carl, or Faye's husband, was our, <laughs> was our Jekyll and Hyde. And I remember the first time, it's one of my favorite moments, is we had the sits probe with the orchestra and we were doing facade like the opening number or whatever. And Josh screen belted his solo and Andy walked by and was like, <laughs> and I love that moment. It was one of my favorite moments of that show. Wow. That production. That's awesome. Yeah. Something, something I do want to say. Um, oh, hi, Orfe. Orfe's in the chat. She's in the waiting room. Oh, um, Orfe's yeah, coming in too. Kids. Orfe. Something I want to say before, an we bring, before we bring Orfe in is for anybody who's... <gasps> It, who is maybe just finds our recording or is new to it or wonders what it is. Uh, a lot of people have said, Oh, what keys are you doing everything in? Or oh, what did you do with this? What did you do with that? And it's important oh, for us to, to, to hi, Orfe. Hi everybody. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Welcome. I, have, I feel like I'm, I have that. I, don't, I have that one. I hope it's not my vacuum cleaner. It is. <laughs> You look like Sam Ash in the 90s. What's going on? <laughs> oh, everybody. This is I needed this car in the background. Oh, I'm like, everybody has this car. But my, my Dyson's over there. We're going to pretend that's a guitar. Great. All right. Great. Just oh, my God. Sam Ash in the 90s. <laughs> <is> the <laughs> <funniest> <laughs> <laughs> I was just starting to say, Orfe, for anybody who's finding our album, our, our She Is Risen Volume 1, is that we did all the original keys, all the original tempos. We did not change a single note or a single line. We didn't make this a female story. We we told this classic story with amazing music, with female voices. And yeah. and so I think that that is, is it's just a testament to how much we love this score. And, and take it away, Orfe and Andy. Is Andy there? He's he's somewhere not here, but here, but not here. Not invited. Of I'm course. Just, I think he's doing one of these on his cell phone because oh. I'm on the computer. So <laughs> there Orfe, you go. I was just we were just talking about how I got my equity card with Andy at Media Theater and Jekyll and Hyde. Oh, Jekyll and Hyde. Oh, I know. My God. And first of all, like I was obsessed with him because I was obsessed with Starlight Express. <laughs> <laughs> but I was also obsessed with you. Me? Yeah. Wow. And uh, yes, of course. And um, being this like nobody kid who just got his equity card and being like, I'm, I'm going to meet Orfe. <laughs> I like you were my Conrad birdie. And we oh. met at that. What was the restaurant? The stone wall in or whatever. The stone. Yeah, Iron Crow. Iron, Iron Crow. Crow. Yeah. I think you were there with Bruce Glickus on closing day or something. And I was like, oh, yes. yeah, you hi, hi, hi it's, okay. it's a pleasure Bruce to meet like you. It's oh, <laughs> anyway, but your Pontius fucking pilot in this <laughs> She is Risen superstar is oh, you, you, unreal. You have you need to hear the rest. Josh, because she's incredible. Well, no, yeah, I you heard the wait till you hear it. Wait till you hear it. Morgan oh, let yeah. me have a psychiatric meltdown <laughs> and I think that's what made it be the way that it was. And I really toned it down for the CD because there are just things, any recording artist and we're all recording artists, you know, there's a way to do something live that you can get away with. And there's a way to capture it in the studio, which is why people think Broadway singers don't know how to record. And we all come from the music business, so we all know how to record. Thank you very much. But yeah. okay. the fact yes. that Amen. Morgan allowed me to have literally a psychiatric meltdown yeah. on the stage of the High Line, and I promised her, I said, I won't do that if we ever put this on TV. <laughs> 
but thank you for letting me like literally I just remember just going into a state I was like okay well between love Janice and now this I will never need to pay for therapy you were amazing <laughs> Well, also, you were so amazing. Morgan. Thank you. But you let me, you let me do that. You, I did it once in rehearsal and Morgan's like, do that. Do that. I was like, oh, okay. Nobody lets or if I do anything. We just were in the, we were in awe of your presence. We were happy that, that Thank you, you were. Oh, Thank absolutely. you. It is yeah, so absolutely. inspiring because yes, you are these remarkable recording artists that I've listened to for years and have looked up to, but what you are beyond that is just fucking artists. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you're just fucking artists. And that to me is remarkable and inspiring. Well, you really you. do it all. And that's incredible. And then you have these incredible producers and you have Richard, who has just been a dream oh, maker yeah. for as long as I've known him. You know, it's uh, it's very, very powerful. And but you know what? I mean, listen, you also have to hand it to... Morgan and Richard and Toria and all you, Meg, all of you. An idea is only an idea if it comes out of the vacuum that it's created and, you know, mm -hmm. and they did this and it didn't matter how, when we started or when it happened, the fact of the matter is, is that it happened and now it is available to the universe. You see, it's, it's all, I have a thousand ideas a day. Andy has a thousand ideas a day, but the difference between to facilitate the universe with art is not sitting on it and they didn't sit on it and that's what makes it important it's not about anything else whatever anyone wants to say we're singing freaking songs that exist we're women singing the songs big fucking deal everybody relax <laughs> Thank you. you know we didn't change the keys we didn't ch it's just we're kick-ass rock singers, and so you got us together, and we sang kick-ass rock songs. The end. The end. Yeah. And so, yeah. Okay, what was your experience like in the studio? Did you enjoy that whole like? Had you ever been in? And I had never been in a studio where everybody except Richard was a, a woman. Like every, I I looked around and I got really emotional because everybody was a woman. I was like, this is so amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't think anything of it because I'm around chicks all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Do tell. I could say, say something yeah. that was kind of amazing. Like um, at one point we were, and this is a testament to really what made this project happen the way that it did. Because at one point I remember being in Nashville in a hotel room and Morgan and I were on the phone and there was a talk about pushing the project back because remember this, because we were like, we can't get the band like with the studio, it's expensive to this or that. And Morgan said, and I'll never forget this. She said, listen, I don't know when we're ever, by the way, I say this, we were zero prepared. Like uh, th this was like, we had like Meg was thrown in as the, like we had, we had nothing prepared. And, but Morgan said, I was like, should we push it? I'm just going to say this. Should we push it back? Maybe even a few weeks. And Morgan said, look, I, I get it, but we're, we're never going to have all of these people showing Available. up at the Available. same time. Yeah. They're all here. They're all ready to do it. We have like 25, I don't even know how many still, I still don't know, like 18. 30, 18 brilliant Broadway <laughs> singers that want to come <laughs> over the, the these two days. Like we have to do it. Yeah. What's the likelihood of that ever, ever happening, happening again. again in the next two years? Yeah. And when, when I hung up from that conversation, I was like, she's so right. Like mm. we, everything else doesn't matter. The fact that we have these vocalists that want to come in and do this. Yep. So I called Meg and I was yeah, like, we, we we're doing it. We didn't, we didn't <laughs> no, have we didn't anything. Yeah. We didn't have anything. It was just like, but we had the date singers and go. It's it's like well, two we, weeks from now. Yeah, we had a yes from Orpheus, Cynthia Revo, Lettucey, yeah. Bridget Everett, Shoshana Bean. And, like, yeah. Yeah. like we had a yes from like these people. I was like, we can't, we may never get this group of people. It just felt like it had to be this group of people. And I, and I have to say, like, you were right. Like at the end of the day, like I look back now and I'm like that, like, I don't know how we would organize that now. Like it was, it was so like all of the other moving pieces that we just moved to meet that beautiful magic moment. 
was the thing that made this record happen. And so I just really shout that out to you, Morgan, because yeah, you you really pushed that. You pushed like that. Uh, you moved, picked up the mountain and you moved it moved over it, yeah. to the studio <laughs> in Brooklyn, and that was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> get, it, get it on tape, do it, it's done. Whenever yeah. you can't, you can't, you can't take it away now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, or if God. I did you ever think you're gonna play pilot? Did you ever dream of playing these this role or anything? You or know, you I, like I, what? I enjoy like whenever anyone says, Oh, you'd be great playing such and such role, I always pick the other role. Like, I don't want to play Audrey, I want to play the plant. Not interested in, I'm interested in the plant. You know what I'm saying? So, like, to me, he was such an interesting character. You think I love conflicted, over the top, you know, what's really going on inside. Um, and it's one of Andy's favorite shows, as you know. Andy's the biggest fan of this entire concept, this entire existence of this. Um, and he would always break it down for me. And I thought to myself, well, Pontius is just the most interesting character because he's the most conflicted. Yeah. So oh, I totally. love that. And I thought, and that's why, again, that facilitated my, my psychiatric meltdown at the high line. <laughs> <laughs> because I really could get into his skin. And I remember us being at rehearsals. There wasn't a dry eye in rehearsal at any given point in time. Like Shoshana would get up, everybody would be crying. So and so would get up. Every Morgan would get up. Everybody, recruit. I was like sitting in the back, going, "I can't take this anymore." I know it was. I mean, Josh, it was out of control because the children were coming for you. Like, yeah, they were. <laughs> you just were like, and it wasn't that anybody was showing off or saying, "Look at, look at how, you know, amazing I am," and look at how many notes I can sing, and no, look at how many runs I can do. I think they were really feeling the the moment and just what it is that they were getting to do that oddly no one had thought of doing before. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it was, that's why it was fucking magical because like it was just special. It was one of a kind. I was do, we were rehearsing groundhog day when it happened. So I yeah. was standing next to Andy watching him watch you watch everyone. And when we came to rehearsal the next day, it was like, we had a really fucking religious experience. Actually. It was crazy. Yeah, hmm. it was special. You know, and then Alex singing freaking Mary. Like, what? What? I know, I know. What? I, mean, uh, I mean, that rehearsal, I wish we had that rehearsal on tape. It could be its own miniseries on Netflix. <laughs> it wouldn't have been. Like, what an actual, that's true. I don't think it would have felt the same. What an actual. <laughs> but, 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 seriously, like, people don't, people just think we're all running around being ridiculous. And sometimes it's a, an act. Actual uh, otherworldly out of body experience, and that was one of those yeah. moments. Yeah. Can I, I say that, something? Yeah, go ahead. I what's interesting is when we were first of all, there's two things. Orfe was our first big get, so we were talking. <laughs> Morgan Morgan said, "I have a dream," and we were talking about that. And then no, no. Bro. So then she called, she texted Shoshana, and Shoshana was like, "Yes, I'm in." And then Morgan and Toria and I went to like a little bar and we were sitting down. And we were like, let's let's talk people. And the next biggest role was pilot. And Orfe's name came up and we were all like, I don't know. Do you think she'll do it? Do you think should we ask? And we asked and she said something very Orfe, like, fuck, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> and we were like, OK, Shoshana doesn't think we're nuts or doesn't think we're nuts. And then it was like anything was possible. Right. But that we're talking about that rehearsal that we're face talking about nobody. We sort of reached out to everybody and we said, we're doing this. This is the part you're playing. And everybody showed up and just did it. Nobody ever said what key. Nobody ever said this is going to be too high for me. Nobody ever said, how am I going to do this? <laughs> everybody just came. And Josh, you were saying how everybody is just a fucking artist. There was no the room was full of incredible confidence and everybody mm -hmm. just got up and did the thing. And we were sitting there going, I, I mean, I, I, I looked my friend, Larry was, was the stage manager. And I looked at him and he was like, people are going to lose their minds. <laughs> and it, it was the first time we had heard anybody sing anything. Yeah. And it was like, like, or what Orfe is saying is I wish I had that on tape. I wish we sold tickets to that. 
because there, mm -hmm. even the concert, which was incredible, nothing compares to that first day. Actually, oh for God. you, Josh, you, it was your first time hearing it. But our yeah. first time hearing it, it was like, I can't believe what we're going to do. Also, it so, was many awesome. of the, so many of these women, Orfe being the first one, we, she didn't say, I was like, oh, would you play pilot? And she's like, yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to do that. Say, she didn't say <laughs> which one, you know, you do have to go through. It's not like you grow up as a woman learning all the female roles and what little there are in all the musicals. And... <laughs> drop that in um and you know you don't, you don't <laughs> automatically oh i know where pilot fits in my voice and there were some women that we contacted almost ever i would say 90 percent of the women that we contacted like we handpicked one of them and they all said yes a couple people wanted to be judas or mary the traditional roles that they knew what they were but everybody else was like i never even thought about playing caiaphas yes i never even thought about playing annas yes like this is amazing this is so like weird and and i want to be something that i would never normally get to play well with that said i just got a really really beautiful fucking text from andy uh andy carl um, <clears throat> um always andy carl no i worked with him at media theater i don't know if you know right. him but um <laughs> And like it really, it's making me choke up. Um, oh God. He wrote, I was so moved by that production of Superstar. Like musical revival productions are doing now, it was the right twist on a classic piece that could reinvent and reinvigorate the material. This is mm. how Superstar should come back and excite Broadway and theater in general through the eyes of powerful women. And... Just, I couldn't guy right there. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't agree more. And I hope. And you know what? I, I kind of just feel it in my gut when Broadway does come back and it's coming back, bitches. Um, <laughs> this is the show that I want to see. And I hope that everybody at home, because you can get this across all platforms. It's she is risen part one. And it's just the first five, and my God, like, I I need more. Like, I feel like a crackhead right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I look sexier no, yeah, yeah. right now, but I just started, which is why. Oh, my God. Nobody knows I have a problem yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just but... stop before you start losing your teeth. Exactly. Oh, God. Exactly, Orfe. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt the, the flow, but no, I thought that it was important that, that I read that. that. Beautiful. No, he's the biggest fan of yeah. this project. He has been since day one. He's, he's, he's just. God, he's just a special guy. And yeah, no, he's right. Out of his, out of his mind over this completely yeah. has been since, since the beginning. And also that's the goal is that we, you know, we're releasing volume two, volume three, and then, you know, we want to take this to be something, you know, live sure. at some point whatever that is it's it's a tour or a show right like i mean you know we're all I would, to do, that was the yeah. I would love to do some sort of reunion you know uh mm -hmm. you know honestly like i've always thought like oh wouldn't it be fun to come together and really have the time and the money to do like town hall yeah and i've you know i think that would be great i i you know i i need to get through a couple more volumes and build up my strength <laughs> um, because trust me this was not not an easy mountain to no. To, but it was it was a lot of so the, but yeah, I'm reinvigorated like Andy Andy said I I am reinvigorated by the response and by um the positivity and by the acceptance and all sorts of you know it does feel very great to have worked so hard with all these incredible people and have people say yeah you it was worth it it's beyond worth it it's fucking magic <laughs> and um you know like we all work really hard and sometimes you think you have something special and then you take a step back and you're like, oh, that was poo. <laughs> you know? So isn't it nice when you take a step back and you're like, oh, thank fucking God. That no, is this, really this special. Aged, this aged really well. <laughs> yes. 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 It's so true. It's, it's so true. true. This yeah. one didn't go, oh, wasn't that great? And, yes. uh, you know, when you're like, you watch old TV, you go, who was... What were they thinking wearing those high waisted acid wash jeans? That's not, you know, but this, this really aged well. And I think it will just continue to stand the test of yeah. time and get better and better and better and gain more momentum and more like frenzy and more love and more, you know, yeah. people will get it. 
it'll be a rollout getting it. They'll oh, and, you know, open more you doors. Know. And when like, you hear the rest of it, oh, oh my I god, I, yeah. it at all. I, I I've heard no the way. rest of it. It's pretty damn good. I, I can only imagine. Pay yeah. a lot of money, but also it's going to open doors. Like Leah Delari and I want to do a fat production of Chicago, <laughs> and <laughs> that's amazing at the High Line. I you think you that know, crack, boy. Yeah, no, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I can't have it. <laughs> it's <again. laughs> Speaking of the one print job I ever got sent out on was for a schizophrenic medicine and I didn't know what I was doing and they were like okay great so it's for a schizophrenic medicine you're schizophrenic and I was like Ugh. and they were like you're, you're not, not a, a monster you're bridge, right? schizophrenic and I was like eh? they're like okay thanks bye you you're not and, no, anyway <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm gosh. gifted. <laughs> oh, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I just really want to have a sleepover right now with the with you <laughs> six and just listen to Superstar. <laughs> and it'll be fun. It'll be this great. Awesome. I'm so glad you guys asked me to show up. Thank yeah. you, RFA. Yeah. I'm thank so you. glad you vacuumed. Good to see you. I'm, thank I'm you for having me. so grateful that all of you came on the show tonight. And every time that you that you release a new one, I want you all to come back and talk more. I want to talk to everybody that has been a part of it just because it's special. And I want everybody at home again to listen to it, gift it to somebody. It's it's just everything that you need to hear right now. Absolutely. Also, the, I agree. The, I agree. Oh, Thank oh. you for doing this. You all that, that, that stuck with it and believed in it and made it happen. And now it's out. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yay. Yay. In addition to getting the music, if you go to the website, um, yeah. which maybe Ellen could link, or we could put with the, with the stream when it posts, but she dash, is dash risen dot net or dot com. Um, and there you can see the fullest of credits. Cause there's so many people that so many we people. can't, the, the band and everybody that worked on the project and we're about to put up the thank yous and the liner no liner notes. And uh, there were so many people that there we go. Yes. That, that helped make this happen. Um, and so it's just Meg put together this website so that people could see a little bit more about the making of, and we're going to continue to add photos and videos. And so if you want to know more, go there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, thank you all so much for being a thank part of this on your Saturday you. night. Thank you. Thank um, you. I love you guys. Orfe, I can't wait you. to come over and play with and the vacuum. puppies and, and vacuum. vacuum. Andy was like, <laughs> I, I texted him and I was like, I love your dice. And he was like, it sucks great. And I was like, I'm going to make a donation to the actors fund now. That was hot. Oh my um, God. <laughs> uh -huh. Anyway, I love you guys. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Wake up, Nick. Wake oh, up. wake up, Nick. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 Nick yeah, yeah. Wake up, Nick. Wake, wake up. up. Nick. Yes. We, we need you. you back. Yes. Yes. Wake up, Nick. Yes. And everyone mm -hmm. else that is going through it, you are loved. You are special. If you are feeling sad, it's okay to feel sad. If you don't want to do anything today or tomorrow, you're nailing it. If you want to go out and exercise, it. you're nailing it. You don't have to write an opera. You're fucking nailing it. Whatever you're doing, you're loved and special. Reach out to anybody, even me. I got your back. You're fucking yeah. nailing it. Okay? And thanks for yeah. tuning in to Josh Swallows Broadway. We'll see you next thanks Saturday night.